Sharpening in Resolve is a little bit different to other software, but it's still very straightforward to use and gives very good results. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Here we have a clip of a swan. Very interesting clip. This was uh, shot at uh, Slimbridge Wetlands Centre in uh, southwest of England, in uh, Gloucestershire, I think. Uh, so I'm going to look for a section on here that yeah, that looks like a quite that looks like a nice section there to look at sharpening because it's pretty sharp already. That section it was it's really in focus, really good focus on that. So that seems like a good place to start. So we've zoomed in there. Now, there's some argument about where sharpening should sit in your effects chain, whether it should be at the start, whether it should be at the end. I'm not really too bothered about that, personally. All I th really think is that as long as you don't put it after grain and start sharpening grain, then you should be fine. Someone may wish to come back and correct me on that. But I usually find it works perfectly well, as long as I'm not doing anything uh, related to grain, if I put it after everything else. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to add a serial node with alt S, as it is in Windows, and I'm going to do my sharpening on a separate node. So you need to go to your blur section across this toolbar here, and you'll find that your drop down is probably by default set to blur here. And when, when it's set to blur, you have the scaling option disabled. So let's set that to sharpen, and that enables all your relevant sharpening options. So you have your radius option, your horizontal vertical ratio, your scaling, core softness, and level. They're the five settings that are going to control sharpening in DaVinci. Most of the time, you probably will only want to use the radius. And pretty much every time I've used sharpening in Resolve, I've only used the radius, and that's worked perfectly well. So all I'm going to do initially is just use my scroll wheel on my mouse. I can just drag it or type it in or do whatever, and it just knocks it down to 0.47, which gives us an initial level of sharpening. If I disable that, there you can see a clear difference between the two. I usually, on a, on a sharp clip, I usually find that 0.47 is too much. So that one drop of my scroll wheel takes it too far. So really, we've got this tiny, tiny amount of control between these two here, which might make you sort of think, oh, that's going to be a bit weird if I want something between. But there's better, there's more control to follow, so don't, don't sort of give up on me yet. So if I put this to 4.8, and then let's take a look at between the two. That's enabled. That's disabled. That looks pretty nice. I mean, we've got fantastic detail in the feathers here, but not too much. Maybe a little bit too much. Sharpening's a weird thing, isn't it? I mean, you kind of put it on, you think, oh, that looks great, but then it's just too easy to overdo it. I would definitely go on the... on the. I'd kind of put it in and think, yeah, that's okay. And if you think it's okay, don't believe yourself. Take it back one little step. In this instance, I'm going to maybe do overdo it on purpose, just for now, and I'm going to zoom in. And as I say, a horizontal vertical ratio, I'm not sure where you would need to use horizontal, where you need to use vertical, why you wouldn't want to just sharpen the same amount, both vertically and horizontally. Maybe it's in certain cases where you have a, uh, um, a kind of mesh in the, in the scene that maybe gets impacted by the sharpening filter. And as such, you can just shift it around a bit to avoid that kind of uh, moire on, say, I don't know, a bridge or a chair, a metal bridge or metal chair or something. Most of the time, you can just set that in, leave that in its 0.5 position. Scaling, well, that will change the amount that the radius is, whatever the radius is doing, it'll change the level of that, really. So, if you push this up, you'll see that we start to get far, far more sharpening on there. It's like way overdoing it in your level control on a standard sharpness filter. So let's back that off and leave that at 0.25 for now. So see, we backed it off and now because we looked at it, because we've looked at it like that, that actually looks okay. So if we now disable it, oh my God, it looks terrible. Uh, so let's put it here at 0.46. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and find a little bit that's maybe a bit over the top. And what we can do, in fact, let me just take it down even further. What we can do now is we can adjust the level control down at the bottom. And as we increase the level, we we find that 
only the higher contrast bits, only the really, really sharp bits. So only sort of this section here, maybe these kind of very bright spots, this, this bit here will remain sharpened. The rest of it will no longer be sharpened. So as we see, as we increase it here, see what see what it's happening. And as we get to a hundred, a hundred on the level control is basically like turning this off. So if we turn this node off now, there's no difference. It's absolutely this at a hundred. This is not doing anything anymore. So you think, well, okay, I might want to ease off on my sharpening, but that doesn't look very nice. Let's just take a look at how that actually looks in reality. Well, it's okay, but it's kind of a bit artifacty, isn't it? You would never want to use it like that. So what you can do now to provide a little bit more control is use the core softness to just start to bring back the rest. So once that's at 100, everything is back. We can just edge it off a little bit and just maybe take away some of the sharpening from the very soft points of an image. So maybe the background and leave it in the relevant area. So maybe we'd want it like that. And let's take that out to 100. And we have, even at 0.41 on here, we have a, well, it's clearly over, yeah, I mean, that's way over sharpened, but it's not too bad. So that's our original image, and that's our sharpened image. I wouldn't probably use it like that. In most cases, as I say, if I just do a reset, I just go, yep, sharp my image, drop this down to 0.7, put it up to 0.48 and just leave it like that and it's absolutely perfect. So there we are, just a quick walkthrough of the sharpening controls in DaVinci Resolve. <laughs>